Father in heaven, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God, we just want to say thank you, Father, for blessing us, Father, to see another day, O oh Lord. God, we just want to say thank you, Lord, because if we know every good and perfect gift comes from you, O oh Lord. And God, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity to come and share this class with your people, Lord. Again, God, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Father, and we can't do it without you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Bella Vista, welcome, and Bella Vista visitors, welcome to the BV Care Stewardship Class Number Four. My name is Deacon Michael Allen, and this is Sister Queen Martin. Hello. Well, hello, everyone. Once again, we're glad to see you back here with us. I uh, just wanted to do a little recap from last week. Then we want to talk about what our goals are for today, and then we'll get straight into our lesson for today. So we've done the first three chapters in the book. We had to admit the problem, we had to address the mess, and we had to adjust our attitude. So now that gets us ready to move into an action plan, which is where we are today. Chapter four is start the plan, create a spending plan, and becoming accountable. Now, in order to do that, there are some things we always will tell you that we want you to know, we want you to feel, and we want you to do. So one thing you need to know is what are your goals? What are your short-term goals? It can be for a month, a quarter, or up to a year. Then we want you to feel that there are some small items that you spend money on, you got to admit this, mm -hmm. without even noticing. And we'll talk about that later in the lesson. And then there's something for you to do. You have to identify where you have spending leaks, and I will explain what a spending leak is, and you have to establish a budget using the forms that we provide. We're going to provide them with this lesson. So I know there are many cliches out there about getting started doing something, and one of them is a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. You will never get anywhere if you don't take the first step. Understand, you will never arrive at your destination if you never begin the journey. So the goal of this lesson is for you to create and launch a new plan for mm -hmm. using money. Correct. And one of the things you notice that we always start off with a prayer because we know that we cannot do this alone. If we could do this alone, we would have already done it. Mm -hmm. So we know we need God's help. So one of the things I put on the handout that you will receive with this lesson this week is a prayer for God's help. And so as you're working through reading the book, as you're working on the sheets that we give you all, I want you to just pray this prayer before you get started. It says, Dear God, I believe you can provide all my needs. I now need you to enable me to take control of my financial affairs and begin living the way you want me to live yes, as Lord. a good steward of the resources you bless me with. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And of course, because you know your own personal situation, you can add different things in there. But we want to get into the habit of pray, praying and asking God to help us along this journey because we know we cannot do it uh, by ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and get started with Chapter 4 with Deacon Allen talking about starting the plan. Thank you, sister. And tonight... Like Sister Martin just said, our lesson is coming from chapter 4 and start the plan. And our Bible verses tonight will be Luke 14, 28 and 29 and Matthew 25, 14 and 30, 14 through 30. And I'm going to read Luke 14 first. And uh, I'll be reading tonight from the Living Bible Version. And uh, it says, but don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first getting estimates, then checking to see if he had enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, he might complete the, complete the only foundation before running out of money, and then how everyone would laugh. And that's the, uh, and, it, and right there is telling us that you have to have a plan. And not only, not only does the Bible say that, that, that if you just only complete the foundation, but that, that B clause of 29 says, and then how everyone would laugh. So people really, and even the Bible said that when you try to live without a plan, then 
how just messed up you can be and people just laugh at you. Okay, so and, and going into our next lesson, it would be uh, Matthew 25, 14, and I'm pretty sure that we're all familiar with this, but I'll read it for us. And again, I'm re reading from the Live Living Bible, and it states, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going into another country who called together his servants and loaned them money to invest for him while he was gone. He gave 5,000 to one, 2,000 to another, and 1,000 to the last, dividing it in, pro in proportions to their abilities and then left on his trip. The man who received the 5,000 began immediately to buy and sell with it and soon earned another 5,000. The man with the 2,000 went right a when the man with the 2,000 went right ahead to work and two and earned another 2,000. But the man who received the 1,000 dug a hole in the ground and hid the money for safekeeping. After a long time, their master returned from the trip and called them to him to account for his money. The man to whom he had entrusted the 5,000 brought him 10,000. His master praised him for a good work. You have been faithful in handling the small amount, he told him, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Begin the joyous task I have set and assigned to you. Next came to the man who had received $2,000 with the report. Sir, you gave me $2,000 to use, and I have doubled it. Good work, his master said. You are a good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over the small amount, so now I will give you much more. Then the man with the $1,000 came and said, Sir, I knew you were a hard man and was afraid, and you would rob me of what I earned. So I hid your money in the earth here, and here it is. But his master replied, wicked, and, wicked man, lazy slaves, since you knew I would demand your profit, you should have at least have put my money to the bank so it could, earn, so it could have earned some interest. Take the money from this man and give it to the man with the $10,000. For the man who uses well what he has given shall be given more, and he shall be given more, and he shall have abundance. But from the man who is unfaithful, even with the little responsibility he has, shall be taken from him. And thrown into the use and and throw the useless servant into the hour of darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. So that so this lesson tonight is saying that God expects us to have a plan. God expects for His servants to be profitable and to do what He is supposed to do. If He gives us the, the ability to do something, He expects us to use the ability that He gives us for his glory, and then he'll bless us instead. But we are expected to do what God wants us to do. And also, coming from the lesson, one of the things that, uh, from the book in chapter 4, that when I was studying this week, it said that, uh, that really startled me, that, that uh, very, really, really startled me. It said, the Gallup organization reports that two-thirds of people in this country are living without a spending plan or budget. Among African Americans and Hispanics, the number is higher. It says research throughout this past decade consistently reveals that roughly 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, with the majority of these people using high interest loans. And high interest loans, and we'll notice a lot of the high interest loans, we see these payday loans. And what neighborhoods are, are they in? Just think about it or credit cards to cover unexpected expenses and emergencies. Without a spending plan, a budget that works, a personal finance spreadsheet, whatever you want to call it, you will never achieve your freedom. And back to the book, it also says, successful strategies do not just happen by coincidence or accident. Certain dynamics must exist to enhance the likelihood of success. 
And we saw that tonight in the, in the uh, scripture where God expects us to do things. When you get something, if God gives you a talent, you need to put that talent to work as soon as possible and start working your talent. And, and you know, don't wait till you are for young people. Don't wait till you're an older person and use all your talents up. Use your talents while you're young so God can bless you while you're young. Don't just come to God. God doesn't come to God when you're old because the blessings that you can have when you're a young person, how God can bless you, will be long and for your whole life, for full of your whole life. So do that. Uh, second, it says the second key to success is the second key to success, successful planning is assembling a support needed to execute your plan. Great athletes have trainers and coaches. Great leaders have mentors and advisors. Great business people have dedicated teams and administrative supports. Your, goal to your, your goals to financial freedoms are more likely to be achieved when you are sharing the journey with your peers and others who understand where you're coming from and better yet, where you're going. So we all in the same boat. So if you get together and do this together and do this financial plan together, we can all help each other and depend. Just like the scripture in the Bible say, it's better for two or three to be together where one falls, the second can pick him up. And thirdly, it says, finally, you must align your plan's implementation with the schedule. While there are a variety of ways to attack your debt, a basic way is simple, is simply to create a payoff calendar. You make a list of all monies you owe, mortgage, credit cards, car payments, school loans, everything, and then the amount you owe to each, the amount of the monthly payments, and the length of time at this rate of payment to fulfill. And don't forget also that throw in there high interest rate. You pay the highest interest rates off first so you can get rid of those. And it says that this can be a daunting task, but if we remember Mark 9 and 23 says, Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And that's the thing that we want to leave. All things are, are possible with God. Amen. Sister. Thank you. And I want to piggyback on what uh, Deacon Allen just said, that all things are possible with God. And many times, you know, we quote a lot of scriptures but our lives don't reflect that we really believe what the scripture is saying because, uh, you know, we say, my God can supply all my needs, you know, and all of those types of things. Well, if we really believe that, then our life should be showing it. So uh, what I want to tell you tonight is that this class, even more so than most, every class that BB Cares is putting on is an involvement interactive class. There's something that you should do. We're sitting up here as uh, facilitators or instructors with the class to just help you get started on the way, but you have a responsibility to read the lessons and then to carry out whatever the instructions and things are to help you move along on your journey to becoming more Christ-like for our class, for getting out of debt, for, for establishing a strong financial foundation so that you can be able to do some of the things that we have been talking about. So the essence of the debt-free, this class, is to help you experience success in life. We have learned that how we handle money is a reflection of how we handle life. So it's not just your finances that are messed up. People who mismanage their finances are people who mismanage their lives many times because money is just a small part of life. In that sense, we really do not manage money at all. We manage life and use money to support our needs and goals. This is a battle. It is, a, it is difficult work. The truth is that if people could remedy their financial affairs without assistance, then they would be doing it. So that's why uh, Brother Allen just talked about the fact that we need support. Mm -hmm. While many people already have the right information in their possession, they've struggled to implement it into their lifestyle. Well, when I read this sentence here, you know, it kind of hit me. Like diets and other personal pursuits for self-improvement, it's easy to start a new program, and many people begin with enthusiasm and good attention. Boy, we're ready to go. <laughs> Just consider how crowded the gyms and workout facilities are every January, and then how attendance has dropped off six weeks later. Mm -hmm. Similarly, with programs to improve financial health, 
Many people often begin, but the changes don't stick and they fail to have any lasting impact. People start reading books, just like our textbook we have here, and never finish. They start forming budgets, but don't adhere to them. Mm -hmm. They set aside money in a savings account and spend it the following month because something goes on sale or they find, see something that they want. So we know that the difficulty is not we are confronting is not just information because we have the information and we're providing more resources, information, the classes, and things like that to help. So uh, we understand that that's why we say we know we have to pray and we have to pull God into this. Mm -hmm. We have to, um, because the problem is emotional, psychological, spiritual. We need solutions that attack these elements of our problem, not just the informational uh, component of it. So, and then the other thing is that we have to remember as Christians, we are accountable to God for our outcomes. It's not just about us. We can't just do whatever we want. It's not just my money, my job. I don't have to pay them if I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do because we are representing Christ. So we have to set some goals, include numbers and new behaviors, and commit this to God. Then we can devise strategies that help each of us reach those specific goals and uh, be accountable to God for executing the strategies and attaining our freedom and relying on God to help us as we go along uh, the way. So, a couple of things I want to leave you with uh, is first of all, just to reiterate, at the basic level, your financial freedom has to include three components. You have to identify your goals, be as specific as possible, reflecting your needs and wants because if it doesn't reflect your needs and wants, you definitely will not stick to it. The second thing is you have to assemble the support you need to execute your plan. Do not try it alone if possible. So try to find some friends, church members, class members, your instructors, somebody who's going to be there to help support you. And the third thing is to align your plan's implementation with a schedule daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. And I know when I say daily, most people are saying, why would you have to have a daily plan? Because we spend money daily and we don't even realize it and it adds up. If you would add it up every day, even just for a week, how much money you have spent without realizing it, you'd be like, oh, okay, so now I see. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a few more statistics here, 40% uh, of households spend more than they earn. It means you're always in the red. 57% of households do not have a budget. Well, even more so than that, uh, I think Brother uh, Allen told us his specific uh, statistics. And we have two-thirds of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, 70% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with that. So some of the key terms I want you to pay attention to when you're reading are spending leaks. What is a spending leak? That's money you spend without noticing that you're spending it or it doesn't add value to your life. And uh, I know some of you all love Starbucks, so if you go to Starbucks <laughs> five days a week on your way to work, wow. you know, I don't know, most of you people that go to Starbucks probably don't just get the regular coffee. When I went, I would just get the regular coffee. But if you mm -hmm. get a mocha latte, I don't know what the names <laughs> are, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're spending five to ten dollars a day on, a, a, on, a, a, on just coffee. <laughs> Uh, so that's a spending leak, can be. Then cash flow, that's just money in, money out. You need to know how much money is coming into your household, how much money is going out, and where it's going. Then accountability is having regular check-ins to monitor your progress and reinforce your commitment along the way. And then the support we talked about, getting resources and encouragement to help you reach your financial goal. So, some of the things that uh, you will be getting this week when you um, when get our handouts, our accompanying handouts, you may not be able to see this well, but uh, this is the, this is a budget form. Mm -hmm. It's a budget form. So basically, um, it's going to ask what is your monthly, total monthly income, and then it goes through all of your basic, your expenses. All the basic expenses we have, you know, House, home, uh, rent or mortgage, utilities, child care, you know, things like that. Then your uh, transportation, your health, consumer debt with credit cards, and then personal things like leisure, hobbies, activities, 
and savings is on here. And if you don't have savings and you're not doing savings now, then that should be a goal that you have of trying to start that. So you will get a copy of this, and we need you to fill it out. You need to work on it. And then the second sheet is your spending leaks. So maybe you don't know what spending leaks are. Uh, we talked about the coffee. So other things that could be spending leaks is eating dinner out, mm -hmm. premium cable, parking mm -hmm. tickets, bank fees, right. uh, late fees on bills where you don't think it makes a difference, but it does make a difference. Um, the banks are, are getting over, I mean, trillions of dollars in late fees and insufficient fund fees and things like that from people who really can't afford to be giving that kind of money away to banks. But that's Correct. what's happening because we're not paying attention to, to where our money is going. So I need you all to, to do that. And one of the other things I wanted to mention about this book is you have the book. Maybe you haven't noticed the subtitle. It says 12 Steps to Financial Freedom. Mm -hmm. And when you hear 12 Steps, it should be very familiar to you because we're familiar with a lot of other 12-step programs. Mm -hmm. So we have the, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. We have Cocaine Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous. Well, guess what? There's mm -hmm. a Debtors Anonymous also. So, but the main thing I want to talk say about the 12 step program is that the 12 step program, if anybody knows anything about it, has something in it that we should be able to relate to. It says, one of the basic premises of the 12 step program is, I can't handle this myself. Mm -hmm. I need God to help me. And as Christians, we should definitely be able to relate to that and, uh, be able to step up and be able to use that over and over again. Mm -hmm. Just keep in your mind, I can't handle this myself. I need God to help me. Correct. And that's what he's there for. He wants to help us. So we need to make sure that we allow him to help us. Correct. And in closing my portion of it, I want to do your affirmations. So we have three affirmations this week also. Mm -hmm. The first one is, my goals are more likely to be achieved when they are written mm -hmm. down. Write your goals down. Mm -hmm. The second one is, there is someone in my life I can trust to help me reach my goals. Identify who are the people that are going to be your cheerleaders that want you to succeed, that are going to be there with you all of the way. Mm -hmm. And the third one is, there are some things that I want that I am determined, really committed to receive. So you have to make that commitment and work towards it. And we uh, look forward to uh, you being successful with this. And uh, as we're closed, well, I'm going to close. I don't know if Deacon Allen was going to say it. But we know that this is a difficult class to um, go through without interaction, personal interaction. So we're going to look at a couple of things. We want to uh, do a Zoom meeting with mm -hmm. the attendees. So next week we will be giving you two different dates, and we want you to let us know what date would be good for us that we can all gather together on Zoom so that we can talk about this. And then if you have any comments or questions that you would like answered or for us to bring up in the discussion, before then, you can send it to us. And my email address is qemartin at comcast.net. Thank you. And, and the uh, only closing summary, Sister Martin, that I have is that uh, I remember that the older people that didn't have, you know, they might not have known what a budget was, but they had mother wit. They called it mother wit or common sense. And uh, I remember this older guy told me a long time ago, he said, man does not plan to fail, he fails to plan. Get you a plan, and he said, and wicked. So man does not plan to fail, he fails to plan. Get you a plan and wicked. And say yes to no debt and yes to God. May we pray. O oh, Father in heaven, O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, God, we hear all your humble, humble servants, Lord, just trying to make a difference for you, O oh, Lord. God, Father, we know, God, that, that all good and perfect gifts come from you, O oh, Lord. And we know, God, that like we heard tonight, Father, that we can do all things, Father, if we only believe, O oh, Lord. So, God, help our unbelief, O oh, Lord. God, we have somebody out there, Father, that may be drowning in debt, Father, and just don't want to say it, oh, Lord. We have many people out there, Father. We have been there, Lord. 
And, Lord, we just ask, God, because, Father God, that it's, it's a sin, Lord, that, that keeps your people, Father, that, that, that keeps us down, oh, Lord, Father. Keep us from, Father, living a free life, Father, to do and say and be what you would have us to do. So, God, we just thank you, Lord, for what you have done. God, we thank you, Father, for the people that will be helped in this, the young people, the old people, us, oh, Lord. Yes. And, God, we just say thank you, Lord, God, because, Father, we know, God, that if it had not been for you on our side, Father, where would we be? But, Father, we also know, God, that if you be for us, it's nothing that we cannot do. So, God, we thank you and love you one more time. And, Father, God, all of these blessings we just want to ask in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have